All right, there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. Friday night, wild times in the market. Hopefully, uh, everything is coming out as indicated. Yara, are we live and connecting over there? All right, folks. Um, okay, so we got the chat going. We are live. Hello, Yara, Sophia, and Pad. Hello, padding the silver stock, hopefully. Um, we are here tonight for the big silver short. Well, the book that I've been doing, the big silver short, the audio version is finally ready. If you want to go ahead and buy a copy now, you can't even wait and you want to get started. I understand. I believe that information will be in the description momentarily. <clears throat> but while certainly we can talk plenty about the book, Obviously, a lot of things happening in the world, and uh, let's see, it does not look like my screen there has started updating just yet, so let me try this. Uh, all right, hopefully you'll be able to see what the cover of the book looks like, as well as the page where you can get it, which I believe is going to be in the description of the screen momentarily and so bear with me here folks this is the first time i've successfully gotten zoom to youtube live working so uh link to buy here all right it's getting there so anyway um china lied people dead well we can talk about coronavirus and all that stuff too as i was saying before um, certainly we can talk about the book, but a lot of fascinating things happening in the gold and silver markets, because it's amazing how life has changed in the last four to five weeks. I've been thinking about it a lot, how really the chaos of 2007 to 2008, I mean, you had all these banking and credit issues put uh, spread across two years where it's almost as if You've had something more severe happen in four or five weeks. And I mean, it just, uh, a lot has happened quickly. Certainly if you're watching some of the mainstream financial stuff, I wonder what that's like. We're under the impression that Donald Trump has us covered. The economy is great. And then a couple of weeks later, we're quarantined. And now the stock market is just getting, been getting thumped, I guess, up a little bit this week. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Where did our, our stock market close this week? Uh, okay, down 4% today. I've been busy editing the book, which is now just about available. I believe I'm actually going to hit the, um, well, it's just about available, so appreciate your patience with all these things. Um, but partly, uh, didn't get to check the markets this morning because I was doing a final proof on the book. And if it sounds like I'm a little frantic or things are a bit rushed, uh, again, I ask for your patience. It's partly true because this was prior to when we had initially planned to release the book. But with all the things happening, seeing the metals prices get absolutely destroyed over the last couple of weeks, Yet in the midst of this happening, a massive surge in demand. Uh, as I've been, uh, if you watch the channel already and have caught any of the Andy Schechtman segments uh, where he's talked about this is the most business they have done in their in the history of the company. That's been pretty consistent with other bullion dealers as well. So once again, we have that scenario where due to conditions in the world, the demand for physical metal is surging. Mints are getting shut down and all this stuff we can dig into. I'm going to keep an eye on those questions and start getting to them. So, uh, you know, we can answer any questions that are on people's minds. Stuart, how are you, my friend? Uh, good to see you in there. How long before the Crimex defaults? Uh, well, that is certainly a good question. I don't know the exact answer, although I know there are some people who think we may wake up to a different pricing environment on Monday. I don't know if it will be that soon, as I'm sure I'll probably repeat more than once tonight. 
pretty much since 2011, I felt like it could be tomorrow, or maybe there's a way that the bankers stretch it out a couple of more years. And that would still be the same case for now. Obviously, I think we're closer to that point. We've never had conditions. I mean, the conditions have always been in place and it just keeps getting more exacerbated. Um, but again, as also we can dig into tonight, we saw liquidity issues from the LBMA, which I thought that was, uh, let's take a look at that announcement. Um, I thought that and from the uh, COMEX as well this week, both certainly unusual. Uh, and it reminded me of one of those, let's see, did we get in the Kitco resolving squeeze? So the LBMA announcing uh, liquidity issues. We've heard, I've heard, I say we a lot because there's a lot of people that go into bringing this show to you. Um, but we heard there were liquidity issues and the LBMA who was having liquidity issues was somehow going to help the CME. Also heard about the uh, bid-ask spread widening. And again, it kind of reminds me of those announcements you get from a government when they you know, the officials are out there warning people that oh, everything's good, you know, just don't panic now, right before they're about to announce that the currency is imploding or the debt is defaulting. So are we at that break point? Gee, it sure seems like we're close. Again, something I've always personally felt was important was not to just throw out a date to uh, make noise or get attention, but only say, hey, we're about to see a the short squeeze of a lifetime in the physical silver market now when that actually is happening, which it could be now. Again, if we woke up to a different environment on Monday, I certainly would not be surprised in the least. Um, and that's really what the book was about, the big silver short, which let's check and see if that is in our description now. Yes, it is. It has appeared there. So to buy the audio version of the Big Silver Short, which is now finally released, it is here Friday, March 27th. Uh, and certainly I'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of making that happen. Um, the audio version you can get there, the print version. I would say that'll probably be about three weeks before that is ready. Um, but yes, you can get the audio version there. Uh, I was just proofing that this week and partly why I was in such a rush to get it out again is because these things are happening now. Um, one of the things that the book covered was how in 2010, actually I'll get into two things. First was in 2008, now you had a very similar situation where following the failure of Bear Stearns, JP Morgan takes over the bank, takes over their positions and appeared to be increasing their short position at the same time silver was getting pummeled from $21 down to $9 towards the end of 2008. And yet again, as the price was dropping, you had a surge in demand, you had physical dealers running out of metal, similar to what we are experiencing now which kind of makes you wonder why is the price dropping while everyone is buying? I'm not sure I could say this as spread to a wholesale level or an industrial panic just yet, but certainly every dealer that I've been hearing from and that has been commenting on this reporting pretty much the same thing. So um, let's take a quick look at today's gold and silver prices. You can see here, and I'll make sure that's refreshed. You can see here gold at about 1628 and silver at 14 and a half. So back to around the cost of production for a bunch of these miners. And as uh, my friend Rick Rule and many others say, the cure for low prices being low prices. Um, anyway, let's get back to love to get to some of these comments. Thank you, everyone who's made some time to be here tonight. Uh, could be a scary or exciting time in the financial market, depending on your perspective. 
but hopefully we'll shed some light on that tonight. What about Trump? Pull up 1 million reserves. Are we talking martial law? Doesn't seem like martial law is that far off. Pull up 1 million of reserves. I'm not quite sure what you mean there. Uh, looks like the, the government stimulus package is going to be $2 trillion. Um, <laughs> well, I guess we know exactly how that's going to be funded. I was actually reading a great article this afternoon about how the Treasury and the Federal Reserve have essentially been morphed into one because the Treasury is doing stimulus. How are they going to pay for that? The Fed or the... Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to have to pull this thing up because it was so... Uh, it was actually quite intriguing. Even mention the involvement of the Exchange Stabilization Fund. Keep in mind the Fed... I believe as according to its own announcement, expected to print $625 billion this week alone, not a couple months or years or lifetimes, but this week alone, uh, which is more than the entire QE2 package in total, which lasted seven months. So, and again, uh, you know, they're gonna print uh, whatever the, the treasury is spending. Basically announced unlimited QE on Monday. On one hand, it was obvious that it was coming. On the other hand, uh, still just stunning to see them actually do that. Well, we got a pop-up ad for Janice Henderson Investors, actually around here in the Denver neighborhood. I'm not guessing they are big gold fans. But anyway, I said I would get back to some questions. I will. Um, China told a false report to W World Health Organization and China paid them to shut up. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that. I wouldn't put anything past any government at this point um, because at least there are lots, a lot of folks speculating that the coronavirus is a bio weapon, regardless of which side it's from, if that's true. Um, kind of just not kind of disturbing, very disturbing. Uh, let's see, Pat, and to top it off, the whole China flu is a hoax to cover up the crimes of central banking. Yeah, there's something that sure seems to, uh, September 11th about ish about the whole thing to me. A lot of money has been flowing out really quickly. Um, why the CDC was hiring for quarantine workers in, uh, in last November. Uh, I sure wonder if they will have any explanation for that. Got this link, which is at jobs.cdc.gov. So I'm assuming it's their site. So here we see, uh, you know, hiring for quarantine programs. Also, uh, some alarming things I saw out of the uh, event 201, another one to look up where the Bill Gates Foundation actually doing trials and simulations of what would happen if a coronavirus uh, were to occur. And this was back in October and they claim it was just a coincidence. Tom says, Chris, congrats on the book. Thank you kindly, Tom. I sure appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, go pick up a copy. And if we're quarantined this week, at least you'll have something good to listen to. Experts with 15 of the world's top silver experts really about why did the price of the metals get hammered as much as it did following 2011 when really all we've seen since then is just an expansion of the debt, expansion of the money printing. Um, and in short, it has a lot to do with trading paper contracts. Oh, looks like my friend Stuart just picked up a copy of the book. Thank you, sir. Pad, why did the gold prices not match on any of the dealers' spot price the last three days before the market opened in New York? Even the CME prices don't match. Um, I'm guessing that's because you probably have some wide markets there. I heard the some of the market makers actually stopped offering liquidity at one point, which is the kind of thing that will often happen. Again, I think some of you know my background was actually an equity options trader on the New York Stock Exchange. And, you know, when you had the flash crash, we would all widen our quotes because you really didn't know what something was worth. Um, 
So, I mean, it sounded like you had some real chaos in those markets the last three days. In terms of the technicals, if I may defer, tomorrow morning I'll be posting this week's interview with Dave Kranzler, where he went into that um, and can give a little bit of a better answer. But I will say the short version is you have some liquidity issues. Um, silver, James H. Silver, the most abused, tortured, beaten, despised, ignored. Um, yes, then there was today. Not sure what you mean there, but I hear you on silver. Um, sorry, can't play. All right, let's be nice to everyone in the comment section there. We're all just sharing opinions. How to get a book. Uh, look in the description there. There's a link where you can buy the audio version that you can start listening to right now. Obviously, I know you're just charmed by my silver banter, so you don't want to leave just yet. But right there in the description, uh, you can get that audio version. I just finished doing an audio proof the last three days, listening to the entire thing. And I mean, obviously, I'm a little biased, but um, I think for anyone who's into silver, I mean, it taught, it, it gets into the market. It, that's why the title is what it is. It was like the big short part two playing out, gets into the market dynamics, gets into a lot of the history. You have a lot of people commenting on the Hunt brothers, Warren Buffett, Silver Stash. Um, but not just one person commenting on JP Morgan or Bear Stearns, but really several of the world's experts, Andrew McGuire, she just finished listening to his interview shortly before it got on here, um, was incredible. And you really just get to hear from fund managers, all sorts of different perspectives. And I think you will enjoy that. Thank you very much. We'll grab it. Well, I'm excited to hear that. So let's see. It looks like Jerry Huang of Impact Silver has logged on. Um, Hi, Jerry, <clears throat> are you there? I trying to get can you back hear me okay? to main screen. I can hear you okay. Good I hear. can't see you, but that's all right, folks. Oh, there we go. Um, let's see if we can, people can see you at home. Uh, we'll find out in a second. We have a little okay. bit of a delay lag. So I actually no know problem. what Silver's price is seconds before you're hearing it. Anyway, Jerry, it's a pleasure to have you on here. Thanks for joining our the big Silver Sport audio release party. This is Jerry of Huang of Impact Silver, a silver mining company that has a high leverage to the silver price. So um, if my theory is correct and this paper nonsense does unravel on the bankers at some point, Impact Silver is certainly a stock to take a look into. So. With that said, Jerry, uh, it's great to have you on here tonight. And how's everything going? Yeah, can't complain, Chris. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, hold up at, at home and safe and sound. Got a few months of supply of food. So uh, yeah, thank you for the invite. And uh, looking forward to talking to some of our other silver peers. Uh, and congrats on the book, obviously, and the audio version. Looking forward to a, a copy of it. Uh, I think a few of our colleagues will call in as well but yeah it's um obviously been a very eventful few weeks um you know a few trillion here a few trillion there every day it's and and you see you know dollar and gold prices moving you know 50s a day which is you know i mean it's very similar to 2007 2008 during the financial crisis um and, and we all knew what happened in 2009 and through to 2012 when silver you know, and gold obviously you know went to 1900 and almost 49 an ounce uh, respectively. So I, I don't doubt um, the broad market and the general investors are catching on. There's only so much you can do, really. Um, if, uh, if the monetary supply is being increased by 10, 15% on a weekly basis, uh, and there's only, only so much ass, uh, hard assets out there, and we're going to start seeing inflation, and people will look for a place, uh, Chris, where they can obviously buy um you know buy and keep uh, their a asset values um and, and we talked at this you know, about this quite a bit this week and see it uh, a lot with uh you know peter spina and some of the other guys on kitco um a lot of guys are saying yeah the paper market uh it, it was trading at 14 15 an ounce silver it hit a high of almost 18 when we were in toronto 
a few weeks back in in March, uh, the beginning of March. Uh, but yeah, good luck on buying an ounce of silver for 14 US right now because Kitco is either sold out or various online bullion. They're charging 40% premium. So it, you, you can buy an ounce for maybe $19, $20. You can't buy it for 14 yeah, some great points you have in there, Jerry. And I don't know if you can see my screen here, yep, but hopefully folks at home, you mentioned the volatility and I thought this was particularly interesting. This is, uh, let's see, uh, 20, so Tuesday or Wednesday this week. It does not mm -hmm. terribly important which one, but you can see the blue line is March 23rd. So gold right under 1500. Again, mm -hmm. I try not to imagine things on these charts, but it always strikes me as odd where here, you look at how flat and smooth this thing is, then it starts moving up. Then exactly. by the time we get to this red line, which I believe was Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, whichever day the 24th, mm -hmm. I guess that would have been Tuesday. So silver is about 1575-ish, then rallies almost to 1700 bucks. Yeah. Then down below 1600 and then down uh, back above 1650 uh, ish. Mm. And uh, as you can see, well, I have a little contact issue there, but we'll be all right. Then goes back down. And we have the Department of Justice doing an investigation mm -hmm. into spoofing. I wonder if that would be considered a spoof right there. But Jerry, like you point out, a lot of volatility and rightfully Very so much. because. Mm -hmm. What did the Fed say on Monday that they were going to print unlimited quantitative easing? Yeah. The, the total for this week was six hundred twenty-five billion. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. I mean that's that's how incredible it is. It, it's it's hard to even fathom the amount of money. I mean this is only a start. We're only we're not even a week in, Chris. Right. So I can't imagine what it might look like in in a few months or half a year. So you know, so silver and gold will will stay stay around, but um, another great point was uh, you see that in the market as well, Chris. That um, you know, with with the shortage of physical gold and silver bullion, one great optionality it would be obviously to buy uh, the leveraged miners, right? So someone like uh, Impact, you know, Gold Corp, Newmont, uh, it basically versus buying a few ounces or a bar of silver and gold. Uh, it'd be a great idea to basically just buy the miners. I mean, we're in, we're, we're five six times leveraged to the price of silver, right? When silver doubled, as we saw in the last three run, um, we go up, you know, by factors of five or six. So Chris, hopefully you're, you're okay there with your contact. Yeah, I'm gonna play through pain yeah. here. Uh, I think I got it almost <laughs> in there. And we're okay, in good here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Jerry, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously when the price is high and comes down, not as much fun right. to be in the miners then, but I guess mm -hmm. the upside to that is that exactly if you have cash in hand today the price is That's cheaper right. um yeah. something i was curious about you know we've seen some of the mints shut down the, mm -hmm. like you mentioned the premiums are rising on the bullion products from the dealers yeah. how can you talk a little bit about how metal actually gets from the miners whether it's to the mints Mm -hmm. or to a company like Apple or the, the electronics yep. companies that use the silver because right. at some point can, will people start coming to the miners directly if the yep. retail demand keeps up? How does that work? Yeah, no, that's a great point, Chris. Um, I mean, obviously we're on the smaller end of the scale or just sub a million ounces a year. Uh, we have obviously produced, uh, that's a big, uh, a can of water, a jar of water there, Chris. <laughs> you, <laughs> I guess this is, gonna, this is gonna be more than a five minute call, but um, obviously we produce more uh, on the smaller side, but we have a cumulative uh, production history of over 10 million ounces now in 2020. Uh, we've been here since uh, 2006. Uh, but prior to that, uh, if you were on the site visit with uh, our friend Rob and a few of the other guys, you're, you'll see the massive potential in the area there. The Mexican miners have been there for 500 plus years before us. And we have a big land package. Um, you know, so in terms of supply chain, um, you know, as you know, we, we signed a deal about a year and a half ago with uh, Samsung from South Korea. So I would imagine a little bit of uh, your cell phone or uh, out there, um, Samsung being one of the biggest cell phone makers and mobile handset makers out there, uh, a bit of the silver probably comes from our mind. Um, and again, that's a direct uh, concentrate contract relationship. They're buying it on the spot market plus two. 
uh, meaning they can take the lowest overpriced within the last two two months. Um, but essentially, that is exactly what's happening. I mean, prior to this, we were selling to Glencore and Trafigura, who then would broker it to to basically um, you know various end users, so to speak. So I mean, the, and this has been happening. Uh, Silver be, it be, it's a little interesting and even more leveraged, I think, because of comparative to gold, because you know you have gold plating in high end electronics, but with silver, you have an extensive use of it in circuit boards for high fidelity and uh, conductivity, obviously, and the malleability is, is much better. And obviously, cost per ounce, you're looking at 100 to 1 gold silver ratio. So it's a much more practical metal for, for industrial uses. And because of that, uh, obviously, a lot of the, the uh, percentage and uh, use of silver per year you know, over 40% of it goes into industrial uses, right? So people call it a poor man's gold, but it's also a very practical metal uh, in terms of utility in that respect. Um, but we are seeing it more and more. I mean, obviously end users uh, traditionally in the battery metals have come to miners directly. They would do a strategic uptake to finance these deals because, you know, up until five, six years ago, a lot of the battery makers, you know, the electric car makers didn't know uh, there was a big of a bit of a scarcity in lithium supply, right? So as the market matures, people start going directly directly to the source rather than buying from brokers who are like Trafigura. They they buy on the bulk and then they they divvy it up. Obviously, you get a much better pricing straight from the source, like anything, right? I mean, if you're you know if you're buying a Rolex watch, and you you, know, you always go to direct to the dealer, right? Rather than through the guy at the street corner saying he can you know save you the tax, right? Same idea. Um, you know, with uh, gold and silver, however, has generally been through bullion dealers and, and uh, you know, but the royalty company, the streaming companies, they've all changed that. So the game is starting to change. They're, they're obviously like any industry, Chris, uh, everyone is trying to cut out the, the middleman. And uh, we're seeing that with Samsung, right? So they're, they, they have a, the sales and concentrate sales division. But obviously, uh, ultimately, we can all read between the lines. Uh, Samsung being how big they are, they don't want to be constrained by lack of raw material. So they're going straight to the end users. Uh, we're not the only one, but obviously it, they don't just knock on everyone's door. So I think we're the only three miners in South America. So far that has a deal with Samsung. Um, but you know, obviously the strategy here is quite clear. Uh, they want to secure that supply for down the road when they need more, they're not held uh, hostage basically by the suppliers. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting point you mentioned there because we can leave Samsung aside for a second and not talk about any particular name. But mm -hmm. gee, if you're a large uh, electronics manufacturer and you just watched yeah. what happened with the retail sure. demand, it would right. seem like the incentive is there. I don't know, uh, and you can comment. I don't know that we've seen any sign of this yet, but. Mm -hmm. at least seem like the incentive is there for industrial users to say wait a second uh, the fed just said <laughs> they can't even they can't even put a number on how no. much they're <laughs> and yeah that's um, right it's just to hey, infinity our silver now do, do you see that being possible on the industrial side as well yeah i mean the the prices i think will start to go up because of the the fluctuation in in the currency um so I mean, I think everyone's getting worried. Nobody really knows how it's going to end. Um, and, and obviously, you know, U.S. dollars have a very uh, bit of an exceptional case here. There's still obviously a flight to safety in the market. I mean, as we've seen that retreat in, in silver prices and equity prices for the miners uh, for the last two weeks, for the most part. Um, I mean, obviously, we're seeing pockets of strength here on the majors, but a lot of the mid-cap and juniors have really seeing a capital flight back to safety, right? People are buying T-bills and bonds and, you know, like low, if not negative yield, but just to preserve capital. Um, so that's usually the first phase. Everyone's trying, kind of trying to see how the dust settles as people obviously uh, feel more comfortable mm -hmm. with risk. And, and, yeah. See there. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're kind of delayed, I think, yeah. It's, Hello. All right. We're having a little internet connection issue there, but okay. I believe Jerry is still there. Oh, yeah, there we I'm go. Here. Uh, I'm now, here. now you're okay. clear again. So. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. But uh, basically what I was saying, I think as things settle and the, the dust settles um, you know, over the next few weeks, few months, uh, people will continue to obviously shift back to risk, uh, riskier assets, the, the mining equities, 
because of the underlying hard asset mentality, right? Yeah, plus they'll be listening to the audio version of the big silver short. Right. So exactly. I imagine if we get a couple hedge fund investors uh, just mm -hmm. seeing the dynamics, and that was really That's the right. point of the book, have the options out there, but have it in one central place where right. someone sits down, reads one document, and it's just mm -hmm. laid out pretty clearly, um, as yeah. stunning and obvious as the basic facts are. And Jerry, you said there was something you weren't sure about, but if there's anybody who knows the answers to everything, that is our good friend, Rob Keens. Rob, are you there? Can you hear us? Rob, I see is logged in, but he, has, he is... probably had to press the mute and the, the video share thing. Yeah, okay, I Rob, I see yeah, you now and we unmute you and let's, can we hear Perfect. Rob? Hey guys, how you doing? Hey Rob, how are you, sir? How was your Great, Friday? <clears throat> yeah, well, this is Rob Keens of Gold Silver Pros, uh, who I got to finally meet in person up at the recent PDAC show in Toronto, where we saw Jerry as well. And Rob, your thoughts on how the Fed in a week uh, or week and a half, it went from one and a half trillion a day not being enough to unlimited. And now we're seeing a surge in demand of physical precious metals. Uh, curious what you're seeing on all of this. Yeah, so it's interesting. The world central banks, I think uh, the tally's up to 12 trillion. It's not just the Fed, it's everybody's either printing or they're providing some sort of stimulus to the economy. They're talking about giving away money directly, free to people uh, to, to spend, which actually probably is the better of the two options rather than just giving the money to the banks. And they hoard it on their balance sheets, uh, the like they've been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, but yeah, it, it's QE unlimited. I don't think they're ever going to be able to stop. Um, I think this is going to lead us eventually into negative interest rates, although I don't think it'll happen right now, but we're effectively at zero anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is basically what they're signaling is money's not worth anything. Uh, no. Everybody's still going to the bonds. The problem with the bond situation is the interest rates are so low. Uh, pension funds and, and people looking for yield, you know, you can't really go to the bonds anymore. Well, you could go to the bonds when they were yielding 10% or even 5%, but they're yielding mm -hmm. very little from around a percentage or so for the 10 years. So where are you going to go? You're going to go to gold and silver. And I think that's what's happening. I think people are going to gold and silver. Uh, I think they're flying more to the fiscal. It's really interesting. You saw the a divergence in price between the fiscal market and the futures market. And that's because I think uh, we've been, you know, talking all along for, for the last 10 years since the last financial crisis that, that physical gold is the only way really to go. Of course, you can look at the, the stocks of the companies as well. Don't buy the ETFs and don't buy the futures. And I think uh, people have started to figure that out. And that's why uh, dealers like Miles Franklin are out or near out of the, uh, the gold and silver. And that's why you see the premiums on the physical gold and silver. Uh, I wrote a couple of times this week, you know, it started with silver. There was a shortage in silver. I think it was it Sunday night. Yeah. I wrote about that. And then a day or two later, it was gold. And you really can't mm -hmm. find anything other than numismatics. And of course, I have some numismatics. And it was great for me because for my numismatics, the premiums just skyrocketed. So mm -hmm. those are worth a lot more than I paid for them, you know, maybe six months ago. So it's good for people that already had gold and silver. If you're looking yeah. for physical gold and silver, it's really difficult mm -hmm. to find it. And really yeah, about right. it, there's two ways you can go now. You can either buy... Uh, 24 karat gold jewelry uh, mm -hmm. at minet.com or goldsilver.com, or you can start buying yeah. miners. And the miners are really, really cheap mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. But if you're trying to find physical gold and silver, I mean, good luck. I don't, you know, I, it's going to be a while before you're going to be able to find it. Do either of you guys have any thoughts? Uh, I guess if I had one key question, I see it as two possible scenarios we have going on right now. And I've heard people argue uh, either version, which is interesting, but we could have the situation where, all right, the U.S. Mint makes X number of products. You have, you know, a surge in demand where people want three times X. So, all right, they have to go get more silver, run their machines. And I guess we call that a bottleneck or manufacturing delay versus what, what the book is really about and what I tried to answer. And I don't know if I actually did find the answer to this in particular, but it's where is the metal coming from? So when you have people buying these extra amounts of metal uh, that, that's just overwhelming the dealers, mm -hmm. I'm wondering where that's coming from. I mean, I guess maybe some uh, 
industrial users with a economic slowdown the last couple of weeks, maybe they're taking less, but it seems it always felt like this demand, if we had retail demand pick up, the metal has to come from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I think most of the people who own silver at this point are the diehards. So it's not like silver is up to 18 bucks and everyone's like, all right, let's go sell it. <laughs> um, no, nope, that's right. And any thoughts you guys on uh, where that metal is going to come from? I would say the last couple of uh, crashes in the gold and silver price that we've had where you, you see the money printing, but the, the price goes down and you're, you're like, okay, why is the price going down? And of course, we know this, this oppression schemes and, and the paper market really has little to do with physical demand. Mm-hmm. And I think the weak hands have already been shaken out. And I think it's going to be harder to get gold and silver because I don't see people that hold it right now. They are the diehards. They're the, uh, the well, first of all, the central banks have been buying gold like crazy over the last, since the last financial crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they own a lot of it. And then you have JP Morgan owns something like 150 million ounces on uh, the COMEX, uh, not registered for uh, delivery on contracts. They say they're holding it for clients, which it could be. But there's 150 million ounces just sitting there that, that they're not going to let go of silver. But you know, I don't I don't know that anybody that's holding it right now is going to let go. I think that the, no. the weak hands have been shaken out. They're the <clears> ones <throat> that have been selling in the market. The people that maybe bought it for trading the price, but didn't really believe in the long game in the precious metals. I think they yep. sold theirs, and people like me have been buying it. Yep. Uh, we're not going to let it go. I'm not going to sell it, you know, at any price until we see what happens with uh, the bond bubble and, and the U.S. dollar. So I, I, again, I think it's going to be hard, hard to get it, uh, you know, unless um, the, the miners are able to, to really ramp up production here in the next couple of years, it's going to be really hard to, to source it. And even so, there's going to be a cost to that. So it's going to be a lot more expensive. So I think this is the end of this era of the gold and silver market where you're seeing mm-hmm. sub 20 silver and I think sub 1900 gold. I think to really get any supply in the market, you're going to have to see $2,000 gold and probably $30, $40 silver before you see it in any quantity. Okay, that's Jerry. a great response. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we we do sell to smelters, and we are now selling to essentially who's an end user. Uh, so before Rob came on, we were just talking about the the uh, suppliers and, and end users going directly to the miners, Rob. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, but in terms of uh, increasing production, I think there's there's certainly a bottleneck right now of new uh, production coming online. I mean, I'm sure you follow. Um, you know, Christian Jeffries, um, you know, Silver Report. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the production hasn't been going up, right? And obviously the capital flow hasn't been very friendly for small cap and mid tier. So there's been no incentive to really increase production either with low silver prices. If anything, everyone's kind of, it's, it's the playing catch up, right? It's a 2020 thing. Uh, the prices are low. So why are we, nobody's interested in increasing production? Uh, unless you're already a mid cap or a major and all you're increasing production to lower your average cost, right? So uh, for a lot, of, a lot of the small cap guys that we talk to, um, if anything, they've suspended or they've dropped the production, right? We mean, personally, we've dropped our tonnage to 400 tons per day in the last year because silver dropped as low as below $12, right? Well below marginal cost of production for most miners. I mean, worst case, we have to at least break even, right? So there's been no economic incentive uh, and, and you can only high grade for so long because when you high grade, you also get rid of the, the chance to go back to, especially for underground, uh, to go back and resort through all the, all, all the ore you basically uh, not produce from because you're only focused on the high grade stuff. So yeah, there, again, it's a perfect storm brewing and obviously the, the paper market is very manipulated. Um, you know, there's a 40% premium on silver and gold right now, if you can find anything uh, other than the special you know, special editions, which already command a premium, right? I'm looking at the Canadian mint right now. It's $100 an ounce for, for a maple leaf. But uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the plebeian sort is out. You know, you can't even get an ounce for $20. It's maybe $40 right now uh, with a box. So, I mean, so forget, forget buying a few hundred of those. And, you know, Rob mentioned Mene. You know, Mene produces jewelry. So they, they do have to obviously increase... Uh, the price, you know, to account for the GNA and design, right? And that's, that's part of uh, James Turk's gold money, which, you know, I mean, they've been around for a long time. As uh, For those who may not know what gold money does is you know, they essentially remote store, uh, store your physical gold for you in, in a warehouse. So, but even from what I know of those guys, I think they're out for another four months. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any supply either. I mean, that, that's a perfect solution. For a lot of guys that don't want the uh, security issue of store- storing, you know, a lot of money mm-hmm. at home, right? But so again, they're they're busy as ever. 
Um, and uh, you check Kitco, you check uh, J, JM Bullion, no, everyone is out. But yet, I mean, I guess the, the only other thing is I remember this in 2008, you know, I think it was either Rick Rule or Doug Casey on CNBC. And they were saying that, you know, people should, and this is more about gold back then, because gold was $800 back then per ounce. And people were saying the, the, the paper contract to actual production per year uh, worldwide was something like 200 to one. If everyone started taking delivery of, of mm -hmm. the, you know, the, 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 the futures contract on silver and or gold, there wouldn't be enough. You know, there's a fraction of uh, people that actually do take the delivery. Mm -hmm. So if you, I mean, the future contract, obviously, you know, you got to trade 2,000, 2,500 per contract. So it's a lot, it's a bigger number. So it does preclude a lot of the retail guys from playing. Um, but, you know, I mean, there are many future contracts that people can get into. And I mean, it could be a movement. I mean, there would be a big short squeeze if that happened, right? Because physically, we all know right now, and it's compounded even more so by Corona and COVID-19 virus because mm -hmm. shipping and logistic is severely delayed. Yeah, I think the, there was an article came out earlier this week, uh, Egon von Gartz noted this on King World News and then it came out in Bloomberg that three of the, the refineries in Switzerland, Switzerland I think refines about 70% of the world's gold, I believe, if I'm correct. Three of the refineries have shut down uh, due to COVID because they're close to Milan. Of course, Milan was hit really hard in Italy uh, by the virus. So they went ahead and shut down production. You've got the Royal Canadian Mint is shut down. Uh, I don't know if the U.S. Mint's still running, but I know a lot of the private mints now are no longer mm -hmm. running. So right. not only is there a shortage of available above ground that people are willing to give up at the current prices, but you're yep. going to have from Jerry talk about getting it to market because of the virus. And, and this virus, you know, they're not a virus in, in North America mm -hmm. right now. So it could go on for a couple more months. So yeah, uh, and one yeah. other thing I wanted to point out, I did order something from Monet this weekend and they just an email saying that, uh, oh, it was an inventory area. They didn't have it anymore. Huh. And I, they're, uh, I think they're having trouble keeping up with all the orders because I think people are switching I can imagine. the coins and bars to, to, the, really? to the jewelry huh. and they're starting to have Even the jewelry. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, think what, what we'll see next is once people can't get the physical. It's a minor. Stock, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I think the miners are going to get a boost yeah. here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I got the Manet uh, gift set uh, when, when I, when those guys merged and spun it out, but uh, it's like a little being of, of gold, I think, but uh, yeah. it was a nice, nice move from Josh. Yeah. And Jerry, you mentioned something that I thought was interesting because that was another big focus of the book where it's like how many people think they own that same piece of metal Again, I asked uh, a lot of the guests that I had come on in the book, mm -hmm. and the common answer was 500 to one or more. Right. Um, and perhaps uh, if there was a main reason I left Wall Street, seeing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, trading equity options at the time, then getting into gold and silver in 2009. So by the time Bernanke launched QE2, Remember there was a note in our morning trader notes that they was going to launch QE2. I was like, oh, geez, here we go. There we go. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was ready when that move happened, the move up, then seeing silver just get pummeled from $49 when the money printing was still going on, the debt still right. being added. Rob, you mentioned something before about how, you know, when that those things are addressed, that's maybe when you start thinking about selling silver, yet mm -hmm. what stood out to me early on and became rather clear and I'm not trying to be arrogant in saying this, although I think it turned out to be right where I don't think they're going to address this. I don't think they're going to fix it. I don't think they're paying off the debt. I mean, I know it gets lost uh, a lot because the numbers get so big, but mm -hmm. keep in mind, we had 225 years in the United States and you had 5 trillion of debt. Then second George Bush doubles that to 10, Obama to 20. Now we just, we just tacked on 2 trillion of debt today mm -hmm. with this uh, stimulus package, which I've only started seeing some of some rough details, although gee, it sure sounds like there's a lot of the stuff in there that has nothing to do with coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, but in either case, you know, I don't, Personally, I wonder if there's really any will to actually undo these things, whether there is any intention of paying it off or if it's just let's raid what we can get out of the system while it's still there. So um, 
I don't know. Maybe there is. I, I have not been able to figure that out. And that's partly why I was always so comfortable early on with both gold and silver, because until, I mean, you have the Fed doing unlimited, unlimited quantitative easing rates are at zero. And that's kind of, well, I mean, I guess they're not claiming that the economy is still great now, but I mean, no. you know, it's still getting destroyed even with that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the concept of any sort of interest rate increase just uh, seems pretty foreign right now. And it's why, and I mean, I guess we'll see when that's more accurately reflected in the prices of gold and silver yet. To me, that's what makes it worth the wait where similar with the the housing bubble i mean maybe maybe you saw it in 2004 2005 and i know there there were people who did and those were some of the people i interviewed in the book um which i might add is available for sale right down below there in the description button you see that jerry i've been hang i've been hanging out with go. jerry so my sales <laughs> game is getting right. sharper these days <laughs> nice always uh, be clothing right yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to do it like Jerry would. Um, but again, I mean, that's that's the thing where it, it seemed obvious to me early on because I don't know. I It, it seems as if, uh, Rob, you're here in the U.S. I think the Republicans would rather stick it to Trump rather than have the economy be in great shape and everyone wins. And similar to the you know, the other way around with the Republicans against the Democrats. I don't, it's like you would never imagine if you went to, uh, we went to one of these, these metal shows and you see a presentation from some company and the executives are sitting there and arguing like Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi. Like you would, you would never invest in a company like that. Mm -hmm. No, it's quite embarrassing. The what's happened in the political system, uh, you know, mm -hmm. It's funny if you look at what goes on in England, you know, they yell at each other all the time, but we've always been a little bit different uh, the way we conduct ourselves. But it, but it reminds me of that. We're all yelling at each other now. And, and I think they're all lost. And I, and I think that's because we're at the end of this system. And if you go back and look at every other system where they've gotten to this point, mm -hmm. uh, past the point of no return, where basically you had 90% uh debt to GDP, uh, yeah. that's the point of no return. It's, and that's been true throughout history. So it, it, it doesn't matter what the politicians do right now. They can't solve the yeah. problem. If they turn off the spigot, we crash right now. Uh, we saw that in uh, quarter four, 2018, when Powell tried to tighten a little bit and it was very modest tightening here in the States. And it, and it really, we had a 20% correction in the stock market, you know, within a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, you see what happened with the coronavirus. Uh, we start, you know, and it was very gradual in the United States because I remember all during February, we were starting to get cases in the US, but they hadn't shut things down yet and the economy was still okay. It wasn't until people started shutting things down uh, that we started having the issues. And it was the fastest 30% drop in stock market yeah. history, including the Great Depression. So yeah. any shock to the system will take it down. Uh, yeah. and no, again, it's, that's not, very fragile right now. You don't have you know, 100,000 people dying from coronavirus or yeah. a million people in the US. It's a very small percentage population wise. But look at what happens when you interrupt this just-in-time inventory system that is so dependent on the next dollar of debt. How much debt the corporates have, how many zombie companies. I think I read something last week. It's like 20% of companies in the U.S. are zombie companies. They don't even make enough profit to pay the interest on their loans. So you, you, you do anything to, to slow down that next dollar of debt in this system, and it starts to crash. And that's what being past the point of no return is, and that's where we are. And it's sad to say that we're dealing with this that our generation has to deal with this that our children have to deal with this but that's just where we are uh i want to throw one more thing into that uh sir john globe was a an english uh gentleman who in 1976 wrote a paper uh about the rise and fall of nations mm -hmm. and he was talking about about every 250 years you sort of have this grand economic cycle uh where it happened in england it happened to ancient assyrians it happened to the spanish it happened to the romans it happened to a lot of societies where after about 250 years, you have this big economic crash and it's a big political and cultural upheaval. And we just happen to be about 200 and almost 45 years from our declaration of independence and, and uh, independence from England, where basically we have been on our own. And so this really fits in with past civilizations, uh, their, econo their 250 year economic cycle. So, you know, it's something that, that I think was 
predictable if you're a historian and you really understood all this for people who, you know, ha have been taught in today's schools, the Keynesian system, maybe they don't understand. But I think we're all about to figure out, you know, how, how stuff works. And when you, you know, live, live off the next generation by, by, you know, printing dollars and, and, you know, issuing so much debt, eventually the system crashes, you know, uh, so I, I think that's where we're at. It, it's a horrible thing to say, but I think that's where we're at and it has to crash. So back to your earlier point and I'll, and I'll wrap up here real quick. You know, it doesn't matter what the politicians do, it's going to crash. And that's when you'll see gold and silver trading at these exorbitant amounts in terms of US dollars or euros yeah. or yen or, or whatnot. Uh, and of course, I don't think any of us really, you know, want, wants to be in a world where that happens, but that may mm. be, you know, the reality we're facing. So. Uh, yeah. That, but that's why you have the gold and silver. The gold and silver, owning the mining companies, having some jewelry, buying some bars and coins is really to protect you during this transition. Yeah. And we're going to go through this transition whether we want to or not. Mm. You know, I urge people don't worry too much about the politics because it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, or Republican, they can't solve the money problem. So just prepare yourself and, and your family and, and help out your friends as much as you can. And, and we'll go through this transition. And if you know if you have invested wisely, then you should be okay on the other side. One final question here before I let you guys run. Uh, Kevin Shum, my good friend from Vancouver, he says the Fed's too far in, uh, in too deep, can't go back past the point of no return. Um, you guys want to take a quick comment on that? Jerry? Yeah, I mean, uh, like Rob said, I mean, taxation without representation. I mean, at some point, you got to pay the piper, right? Like it's, uh, I, we talked about this earlier before Rob signed on, but U.S. is in a very unique place the last 30 years, you know, incredible economic growth. You have some of the most innovative companies and the largest tech companies in the U.S., which then, you know, I mean, obviously in the biggest stock market in the world. So you have that flood of money buying up U.S. T-bills, right? I mean, if you, if we were living not in North America, guys, I mean, Canada has by proxy has, you know, a bit of that luxury as well through U.S. being the biggest trade partners there. But if we were living in Poland or Germany right now, that that's not that would not be the case, right? Like mm -hmm. the government run a surplus and they try and balance the budget on purpose, right? Because smaller countries, who's gonna come and rescue you, right? China would not buy T bills from you know, without without a very juicy deal, right? Like uh, in terms of military or or some sort of a, a trade off down the road where they buy your port, they have a rover on your next infrastructure project, which then you're giving up control of your of your country, really, in, in exchange for that, mm -hmm. right? So, so U.S. has been able to get a free pass because of this economic uh, you know, supremacy. But as Rob says, I mean, this is not going to last forever. And, you know, we all know the fundamentals here. You owe money. At some point, you have to pay it back. And when you artificially increase the, the money supply in the market, it's only things will start getting more expensive. And we're starting to see that already, right? I mean, you, your dollar doesn't go as much as far as it used to. And you know, there's, there's that real and nominal infl inflation and interest rate, but we all know things don't go as far as they used to. Um, you know, the, it, it takes a lot more. The, the wage and the growth hasn't caught up to a lot of the price uh, growth in, in, in various common goods. We don't quite have the hyperinflation like we, we saw in the great financial crisis. I have, I have a trillion dollar bill from a mining company who used to use them as a business card. So they would buy it for $10, they'll get a whole roll of them. The, the, the Fed's it. printing those up now. So, right. uh, you know, you <laughs> next we joke. rolled out on Monday, <laughs> right? We joke about it, right? But I mean, COVID-19 brought out some of the worst in people. Unfortunately, as Rob says, you know, like people, people are hoarding food and toilet paper, right? Like literally toilet paper in, in uh, weight terms was, is, is now worth more than, than worth more than a barrel of oil. Which well, I is think hilarious. you're seeing the, uh, Toilet paper U.S. dollar spread diverge <laughs> right now, which um, I think Warren Buffett had that trade on tonight too. So that's what the smart money right. is doing. Clearly, um, guys, yeah. Guys, I yeah. appreciate you joining me here tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure getting to know both of you who have come along my own silver journey. Um, so thank you both for your involvement in my career in getting this book together. And mm -hmm. I like to think it's hopefully going to be a good thing for the industry. Just, I wrote it so that my mom could understand it. So that, mm -hmm. I think there's a degree to which, you know, sure. the mining industry, mm -hmm. we're telling the same people over and over yeah. again, 
why yeah. gold and silver is good and they know that but rob as you and i have talked about getting that message out to mm -hmm. some of the people who are watching cnbc and maybe you haven't been into gold and silver yet but see right. unlimited quantitative easing so yeah, what does that mean yeah, yeah, it's just um, the numbers are so large that it just paralyzes people, right? Like it's a, until it hits their everyday life or, you know, it impacts their jobs, you know, costs get so too high. It, it is it is hard to relate uh, for the mom and pop. But I think, you, I mean, doing doing a very layman approach in, in the book, Chris, I think that's a great, great, great idea. I mean, on the site visit to, to Mexico not long ago, I mean, uh, Rob would remember, but the guys mm -hmm. from Equity Guru, right? I mean, they, they did a media company, they... They they relate to the millennial, and because of that, I mean they're they're I think supposedly bought out by Bloomberg within three years. So again, it, it's Bloomberg is even trying to get get you know Goldman Sachs is trying to 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 get to the retail market. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a, a tipping point, if you will, that retail and generalists are starting to realize. You know what? Maybe I should buy some gold, or maybe maybe I should go get some silver. And when that mm -hmm. happens, like, it's a very small market right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the book, Chris. I've had the opportunity to read it before you got it published. And I just wanted to recommend everybody watching this uh, video. It's a fantastic book. I fully recommend it. I told Chris, I'm probably going to buy 10 copies and hand them out to my friends. As soon as the book is out, uh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. And you did a great job. And congratulations on that. Well, thank you, Rob. I, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, you're actually, aside from my business partner, Yara here, who many of you had met already, um, you're the only person to have read it. Rob was kind enough to help me do a, a quick proofread through there. Um, so any thoughts you had uh, be before we let you run? Uh, just what, what stood out to you from, from reading it? Yeah, you know, uh, I, always go, I always go back to uh, just the, as you're reading through it, just the that moment when you look back and you're like, oh my God, you know, if you're not somebody who's been following this for 10 years like me and you read this book, it's going to blow your mind because yeah. we're on the cusp of seeing what you're talking about. You're going to read the book and realize that, that people have been talking about this. You have government officials, you have analysts, you have, uh, you know, people involved in, in retail trade talking about this. And most people, you know, if you're not connected to these markets, you may not understand all the logistics and how, how it goes on. You, you see the, the price quoted on CNBC and, and you're like, okay, yeah, that, that, okay, that, that's a nice little market. But, but to hear the opinions, the voices, uh, you know, it, it's just amazing. And, and I think it's gonna be amazing read. Um, I, I, it's gonna blow people's minds. If, if, if you are just getting caught up on the situation with gold silver right now, uh, when you read this book, you know, you're going to be kicking yourself and wishing you had known this 10 years ago. And there are people who have known it, but for, for all that information to be out there and for the general public not to understand, you know, what the mechanics are and what we've been talking about, but to have all these people kind of walk you through it, through these interviews, it, it's really easy then to understand. You don't have to be an expert to, you know, to pick up on that, but it, but I think it's going to blow a lot of people's minds that, that, you know, everything that happened and, and why it happened. Uh, it's a great story. It's a great read. Mm -hmm. It's something you can just sit down and, and read in, in a couple hours. I did. It only took me a few hours to get through it. I loved it. Uh, anybody can pick it up. Uh, but, but it's going to be one of those things where you're going to look back and say, yeah, that, that was an amazing story. And I think you really captured it by the, the people that you interviewed. I think it's just a great book. Well, well, I appreciate that. And, and it's great to hear because that's that's kind of the same feeling. Again, I'm a little biased, although I was listening through the whole thing in the last couple of days doing a final proof of the audio. And again, I thought it was interesting how you heard people from different backgrounds, different functions, whether an analyst, a fund manager, the regulator, but all largely coming to the same conclusions and each sharing their own twist on that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, wanted to make it easy enough so that you know, people could understand if you've never heard anything about this before. So yeah. um, that's great to hear and uh, appreciate you sharing that. So Jerry, I know you're probably ready. You're mm -hmm. thinking, geez, I, I want to go start listening to my audio version of right course. now. So I can understand that. Definitely. I thank you guys both for being for you. Sure. You're both good friends, great men in the silver industry. And uh, also nice to have you on the show tonight. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff like this, live calls and Great. really just uh, giving people a home for, I don't claim to have all the answers, mm -hmm. but I at 
least go and ask when I don't. And so as these events are unfolding, people have a place where they can at least get some coverage of what's going on. So Jerry Huang of Impact Silver, Rob Keats of Gold Silver Pros. Uh, we will do this again soon. And I thank you both for joining me and hope you're doing well out there. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Guys. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, stay safe, guys. All right. All right, folks. And wow, look at the timing on that. Just coming in fresh out of the bullpen, right when the starter is getting a little weary. There he is, Rory Hall of the Daily Coin. Rory, I even saw you were making it into the comments of this live session here. Um, somebody was mentioning they saw something on your excellent, fantastic show. Yeah, your interview uh, with Alistair McLeod, where apparently he talked yeah. about the Mississippi Company bubble exactly 300 years ago by James Law under Louis. Uh, geez, I should have paid attention to those Roman numerals. I'm going to say XV is that that's 15, right? Okay. <laughs> Does that sound right? Uh, I, I went to a government school, yeah. so I'm a little bit slow on these things, but. King Louis aside, how are you, Rory? I'm doing well. I hope you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, going to be ready for some sleep uh, probably about as soon as we log off here. I've been doing a lot of editing, keeping the show running, uh, trying to follow the markets. Not easy to keep up with the Fed these last couple of weeks, huh? Dude, it's been the, the past, since really since November. It's been incredible. And in January, everything kind of went exponential. And now here we are in March and, and I am, I'm right there with you, Chris. I'm about rung completely out and yep. it's, uh, it's a lot. I mean, these guys, they, they are relentless, these criminals and their, their criminal activity is just it's gone exponential, you know, and, and you throw the anxiety of the unknown and the lies and the propaganda about this virus that's going on and, and the absolute truth that we know that we can wrap our heads around that are just, you know, very disturbing to say the least. And all of these, it's just, it's, just, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. And I was just watching uh, Tucker Carlson, which I, I do every night. I, I think he is the one of the few. He may be the only uh, corporate voice out there that has any credibility whatsoever. And I really like his show. Some of it I'll, I'll call him out on, but a lot of what he does is really good. And he had this uh, doctor on that's in uh, one of the New York hospitals and man, what they are going through up there is something it, it, and it's not even, it's not even active. It's, it's not really, they haven't gotten to the, uh, um, top of it yet. The, the real surge, it's not even there and it's, they're already overrun. It's incredible, but what's going on in the market, the precious metals market is, is, incredible and when i was talking to alistair earlier today and we were talking about uh john john law and what he did and what he did was exactly 300 years ago right now literally and it started his um this experiment that he did with the uh, uh mississippi bubble started in october of 1719 Repo Madness started in September of 2019. Hmm. Everything started getting out of balance and, and really wacko in the early spring and summer of 1720. Yeah. Here we are in the early spring of 2020. By the end of the by the end of 1720, it was over. Everything, everything had changed. He had gone from a genius to correcting the markets and say, 
literally saving the economy to act to absolutely imploding the economy. And that happened in less than a year. And that, and Alistair McLeod, when he was going through the details of all of this is like, that's what we're looking at right now. This is, I mean, he was, he was describing what is happening today, literally today. And it was just like, Oh my goodness. And if you think that that interview today was good, wait till I release tomorrow with the, when we get into the gold, Oh my goodness. <laughs> I could only imagine. And Alistair is over in London, right? Yeah. He's just outside of London. He's not in the city. So again, and folks, uh, for everyone who's watching live, or if you're catching it on the rebroadcast here with Rory Hall of the daily coin dot or it's org, right? Yep dailycoin.org fortunately google fills out the rest of it for me so uh <laughs> rory hall of the daily coin and you were talking about your interview with alistair mcleod who as you mentioned is in london and i would say uh the big news of the week <laughs> i don't even know if that's fair to say i mean you had the fed unlimited printing on monday so a lot happening yeah. but <clears throat> perhaps for the folks who are heavy on the gold and silver like us. One piece of big news this week was getting liquidity warning issues from the LVMA. I guess you could say the same thing happened with the COMEX or CME. Um, and I'm curious uh, your thoughts. And again, if you want to pass along anything Alistair said, uh, I think what's on a lot of people's mind is that, all right, we see some of these mints shutting down. Is it just they need more product to get the next batch of silver, make it into mint form? Or are we reaching a point where the that next batch of gold and silver isn't there? Uh, so thoughts on that? It's it's all gone. It's it's all gone. Wow. There's probably going to be some silver that's refined. Uh, the three largest gold refineries in the world are shuttered for the next, for a minimum of the next two weeks. Uh, James Anderson, who I just interviewed yesterday or the day before, um, he seems to think, and I agree that they're going to, that they've announced that they're going to be uh, shuttered for one week, two of them. And then the third one is going to be for uh, two weeks. And both of us kind of believe that it's going to be like, a minimum of four to six weeks. And Alistair seems to think months. That's uh, the mints you're referring to? The re refineries. Refineries, okay. The gold refineries. Okay, so let's look at the let's look at the supply chain of gold. Okay. Past decade, the mining sector's been under enormous pressure. Enormous. Now we have the refineries that are, their, their doors are shut, okay? And Rand Gold just today, you know, it was today or yesterday, they said they're not going to shut down, but they're going to slow down. They're going to slow way down. So four of the largest ref gold refineries in the world are now either slowed down or shut down. So that's two huge pieces of the supply chain. We already know that the uh, retail on the, on the retail side, that's all gone. Everything's gone. Or if it's not gone, they, you got some scraps and you've got some really super duper premiums in places, you know, hundred percent premium. That's going to, that's probably going to go to two or 300%. If not more, there's going to be, a, I personally believe, Alistair believes, James uh, Anderson believes that there's going to be a complete decoupling from the, uh, the paper, from the physical, that, that, that it's going, it's, it has to. I mean, and the question that I, that I have is the, the LBMA and the COMEX, they've overplayed their hand in a big way. It's, um, they, those are, are dinosaurs and what's, what's been happening with their uh, exchange for physical that whole Ponzi scheme is now being uh, completely dismantled and exposed. 
And the what I what I see and and I and I get into, I don't want to give too much of it away because I want people to listen because Alistair does a fantastic job with it. Um I believe that the Shanghai Gold Exchange is going to play its part for what it was built and designed for. And you remember, Chris, when I the the whole reason that Kitco uh, reached out to me and asked me to to be on their show was because I'd written that article about the six uh, physical gold platforms that are either A, online, or B, they're building them out right now and will be either online later this year or in the first part of 2021. So you've got this whole network of physical gold platforms that are being built out and they're all feeding off of the Shanghai Gold Exchange. They don't care two cents about the COMEX or the LBMA. They could care less. Why? Because those are two criminal entities. So who cares? I mean, seriously, it's like they don't have any gold anyway. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't. I mean, you know, James Anderson went through the whole, he broke down everything. If you haven't listened to that interview, you really need to because he does an unbelievable job of breaking down what the um, the physical silver and the physical gold that's actually available. And there's only about a, a thousand tons, I think is what he's saying, uh, on the COMEX for delivery total. Yep. I mean, that's registered and uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke. It's a joke. You know, he's, he's reeling off all these numbers and it's like, okay, so that's, that's about a week. <laughs> it's about a week of supply. Yeah. And, and that, and that's what we're looking at, you know? So how do you, how do, so retails are out. Traders can't, traders aren't, don't care about physical because they're just, they're just moving charts up and down refineries are, are closed, which you're looking at um, 70, 80% of total gold uh, production, whether it's new, uh, newly, min newly mined gold that's being refined or the recycled gold. All of it goes through these three or 70, 80% of it goes through these three um, refineries that are now shuttered uh, for the next two weeks minimum. And so you, that combined with the, with, the, with the issues that we've been reporting on for forever, you know, well, you know better than I do what's going on with the mining sector. I mean, so where's it going to come from? So you have two of the biggest pieces of the supply chain that are uh, crippled at best, right? So, and what's on the shelf right now? If you were to call up SD Bullion or Atmax or JM Bullion or There's one of the other. Not others. a lot. And uh, interesting, you mentioned the, the physical markets decoupling, which in a sense has happened because you see the COMEX price, but if you want to get physical product, there are those premiums. And Rory, perhaps uh, in the couple minutes we have left, I guess the key question, how does this get resolved? There's a break from the, a, a, just a total break. I mean, that's the only resolution that there can be that I'm aware of. I mean, you know, that the free market takes over. I mean, as far as the, the precious metals, I mean, people, that's, it's already happening. I mean, it's, you know, is it, is it going to revert back? I mean, is, is, you know, a Mark or any of these other wholesalers, are they going to start looking at the CME spot price again? Why would they? Why would I? Why would I care? You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just stunning in that sense of something when you've been expecting it for so long, it was long and then one day the volcano finally goes off. Um, <laughs> actually, I know I said last one, but we'll give you one more and this will be fun. <laughs> June 1st, what is the price of gold and silver? Uh, June 1st, 2020. I'm going to say that gold will be north of 2000 and uh, silver 
I, I really, I, I, I can't touch silver. And the reason that I can't is because of the uh, interview that you did with Craig Hemke. And I just, I can't, I can't do it. If you guys haven't listened to that interview that he did with Craig Hemke a few weeks ago, you need to go listen to it. You need to pay really close attention. Really what, was, close attention. what was the smoking um, gun you nope, found nope, in there? Nope, nope. Ah, you made me think I, I said, or maybe nope. it was Craig said something really. It was funny. Craig that said it, and okay, and, and it's uh, <laughs> it's it's not it's not off the cuff. I mean, it's plain as day. It's right there. It's just it's as it's as clear as my hands waving around right now. Yep. <laughs> you just have to listen for it. I mean, just go back and listen. You'll get it, and. So I'm not going to touch silver. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I'm not fooling with it because there's there's too there's too many too many things that can happen that are out of the out of the realm of reality. And uh, when you have the central banks around the world that are in gold, that changes the that changes everything. When you have gold as a tier one asset, which means that it's money, that changes the the game as well. The, when people are looking at the LBMA and the COMEX, the CME group right now with, with kind of sideways and looking at them like, uh, really? That's what you got going on? Okay. And the, like I said a moment ago, the Shanghai Gold Exchange is a physical, physical gold and silver market that has international um, it can set the it can set the price of both metals uh, at an international level. So that's 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 where I think it's headed, and that's who I think is going to take. That's where it's going to. That's is it going to happen right away? Probably not, but it could. I mean, the way things are the way things are changing, it could it could happen. I know there are some people who wonder if we're going to have an announcement Monday morning. Uh... Who knows? Uh, I couldn't confirm that, but wouldn't be surprised. And although what I can say with complete confidence is that there are a lot of people who, if you are correct, and we have a gold price of above $2,000 on June 1st, uh, is going to make a lot of your readers and viewers smile. Um, I'll be happy about that as well. I, and I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if, it, if we should be happy about that. I mean, what kind of Thing, things are starting to fall apart and as you know Chris I mean gold is it's a, it's a thermometer it says it, 2000 plus gold says that the patient is very sick you know if we're, if we're looking at 2500 or 3000 dollar gold which wouldn't surprise me in the least <clears throat> that it really wouldn't then what kind of world are we going to be looking at what kind of inflation are we going to be looking at what what's actually going to be happening on the ground not sure that that I, I don't see this as you know a a uh, hoorah moment. I see it as more of a oh my god moment. Uh, you know that I I get what you're saying there, and I mean I get fully the, uh, the impact of that statement. I guess my counter to that is that the patient's already sick. The patient is, uh, is is on the deathbed. You saw the Federal Reserve. I mean, they th there's the patient, unlimited QE, and that can't even patch this mess together. Right. So, you know, and, and I get what you're saying. I guess the way I've always looked at it is that I'm a fan of accepting reality and rebuilding as soon as possible. And mm -hmm. I hope that there's something a bit more honest on the other side of this. And maybe there will be a transition, but again, thanks to the information that you share on the dailycoin.org and on your YouTube channel. Um, just like in the same way, there were a lot of people who made fortunes during the great depression. Um, mm -hmm. Would I run government or fit a monetary policy like this? No, but to the degree that we're here, it's our, our, goal to make the best of whatever situation we're in um and you do help people do that every day so i thank you for thank all you. you're um, doing and for joining me on the show let tonight. me say, say this real quick uh if if there's time i, I don't want to sound like the that it's just that a negative nelly 
believe me, if, if things go sideways, if they continue going sideways, I'm going to take some gold and I'm going to convert it into something real. Am I going to be able to go out and get, you know, 10 or 15 acres for a, a couple of ounces of gold? I hope, I mean, that would be, that would be great. I would, I would love for that to happen because that's why we have gold that, and, and those of us that have been in the market, that's the reason that we have it is yeah. to protect our purchasing powers, to be able to protect our wealth. And it's not, I was talking to, uh, uh, James, you know, and saying, you know, it's not about me having these coins or these bars. It's about being able to convert those into things that matter for my life and my family. That's why, that's why we have them, you know? Yeah. I mean, we want some that are collectible that are gonna, that are, that are either beautiful or that we want to have them because of their, because of, uh, of a value outside of the gold, but primarily we have it because of the value that gold is. And we want to take that value and convert it into something that is more meaningful for our life. That's why we have it. So, I mean, I, I, like I said, I didn't mean to sound like a negative Nelly or that, that I want, you know, take full advantage of the situation because believe me, I will. That's why, that's why I've been in this market. So, I mean, I hear you. And I think a lot of people get what you're saying and, uh, we'll respond the best we can to the upcoming times and Rory, I thank you again for all of your support. You've been a big help uh, all the days. I was wondering, am I ever going to get this book finished or got to go become a plumber or something? Uh, thank <laughs> you for all of your support. I'm going to send you the link to the uh, complimentary of Arcadia free. Uh, I got a copy of the audio version for you. I'll get a copy of the print version Ooh. your way. But if you want to listen to some good silver talk this weekend, um, I think it especially is relevant for what's happening. Uh, right now in the markets and look for it. I believe we're doing a call on Monday. I'm coming on the daily coin talking about yeah. it, right? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. We will be, uh, we'll, we'll pick up this conversation in just a couple of days. Cool. Well, I will look forward to that. My friend Rory, thank you again for joining me tonight and uh, you have a great weekend, sir. Thank you. You as well. I'll talk to you soon. All righty. Will do. Rory Hall of the daily coin there. And now we were back down to just one. All right, let's see. Um, let's take a couple questions. I'm going to go until about, oh, do we still have the Rory block there? Let me see how we can adjust that. Okay, there we go. We're back to a single screen. Chris Marcus with Arcade Economics here with you. Again, we've been doing a talk about the markets. Uh, I guess we talked to someone about the book. I mentioned it a bunch of times. Um, although certainly digging in a lot about silver. And you know what? I said I was going to look and see if there are any questions. So I will do that now. Alan Flynn joined us. Hey, Alan. I wonder what time it is in Australia, but great to see you there. Um, folks, if you have any questions... Uh, I haven't been keeping an eye in the last half hour on the chat room too much there. Uh, apparently the James Anderson interview was awesome. It usually is with James. I think he'll be on the show next week sometime. Um, but yeah, again, if anybody has any questions, type them in now. I'm going to go a few more minutes. If you have a lot of questions, we'll try and answer those. Thank you too, Rory. Um, James H. Anyone seen today's COT and what it says? Well, that's a great question. In fact, I have not, although how about we do that now? Um, let us see. Hopefully, are you seeing my screen there? Um, which hopefully is going to, all right change to this cot report let's take a look at silver and well there we go are we gonna see no not up oh, there it is so the silver chart uh the cot let's cross this baby out of there wow looks 
they always have a funky reading there, but looks like silver. If you see this C field there, it looks like from negative 54,000 contracts or so short 54. Um, and you can look at this red line here shows how short the banks are. Looks like they've been covering, which would make sense because you had that period um, uh, the last two weeks where the price was dropping and often the banks do cover on those occasions. Let's take a look at gold. Uh, doesn't look like came in quite as much there. Uh, 311,000 contracts. Um, so it looks pretty flat in gold. And uh, let's see. So that is the short answer to that question. Uh, COT shows a huge reduction. Looks more so in silver than gold, at least if I'm reading that right. Alan Flynn, it is lunchtime. Well, it's great to hear from you. Alan, uh, Alan is another manipulation researcher who's tracked a lot of these cases. Um, Comex, we have a problem, I believe is the name of the website. Alan, maybe you can type that in there if folks would like to check out some of the fantastic research you do. And we are going to be getting Alan on the program one of these days soon. So uh, that will be good. Let me rewind here a second, perhaps. And again, if you have any questions, type those in. I'll take them. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up in a few minutes here. But here you see today, Trump signs $2 trillion coronavirus stimulus bill. Um, I'm guessing the Wall Street Journal did not mention the ESF is likely going to be the one to fund that, uh, them and the Federal Reserve, which may as well just be one organization, president spending $2 trillion, the Treasury sending it over to the Federal Reserve to print it. Um, Interesting, started out last week as an $850 billion deal. Came a trillion by the end of the day, now has become $2 trillion. Uh, I wonder if I will get a uh, $1,200 check. Maybe I could buy some mining shares, would be exciting. Um, <laughs> but we shall see. Um, Trump authorizes Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Services to call up reservists to fight the virus. The executive order provides emergency authority to active duty, as many as 1 million members of the reserves. Yeah, there's a lot of reserves. Uh, and then there was a, an attack on an Iraq base. Uh, Trump sending troops to uh, Europe. A lot of unusual things going on. And... <laughs> Maybe one day I'll do the conspiracy version of the show. Maybe I do that every day, who knows. Um, but certainly the different possibilities of what might be going on that I've heard out there, um, who knows what is true. Again, I kind of feel like Trump doesn't really believe some of the things he says publicly because when he was campaigning, he made some statements that made it seem like he very clearly understood what was going on. Um, so what he is really thinking, saying and doing, and whether he has been compromised or is knocking back the deep state. Um, I've heard a whole variety of things that I will keep to myself tonight, but giving you a great reason to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And also again, one last time, I may mention that the link to get the audio version of the Big Silver Short is right in there now um, in the description field below, right down there. So go ahead, pick your copy up. I'm going to wrap this up for today. But the Big Silver Short, um, it is finally ready to go. Uh, and if you're watching this, I'm guessing you're into gold and silver. And this was really, it turned out to be the investigation I feel like the Department of Justice for the CFTC should have done. So uh, a lot of silver history, a lot of great guests and perspectives. So if you're invested in these markets in any capacity, I know I'm biased, but I do genuinely think you'll love the book. I had a blast reviewing it these last couple of days. Uh, special thank you to Yars Sophia 
who has helped keep Arcadia running, has also kept our food going here at Arcadia headquarters the last couple of days. Um, everybody who has supported the show, supported what I've been doing, has not been the easy, easiest path, but your support has helped to get through. So um, really excited to have the book out there before some of these things develop. Again, uh, you can click on the link below to get your copy and start listening right now. Don't have to wait for it to be shipped. It's some audio files. And so with that said, uh, thank you again. I hope you're well out there and being safe and just feeling peace in these times that obviously a lot going on, but I think the thing we can always, what we're doing right now, how we treat each other. So with that said, thank you all so much. Have a great night. God bless. And I